Hello, Sal here. Welcome to a new NetApp tutorial. In this video tutorial, we are going to be working with NetApp data protection with Snap Mirror. The name of this lab is Administering NetApp Data Protection Snap Mirror. Um, this video will be divided in two sections. Section number one will be configuring Snap Mirror. Section number two will be managing a snap mirror with a failover fail back operation okay per lab guide uh, here we can see um, an overall uh, diagram of what's going to happen we, here we have our data center one with a volume called chicago retail uh, this volume will be a snap mirrored into a disaster recovery site data center two and in data center one, uh, this volume is read and write. And in our data center two, the disaster recovery site is only for read only. Uh, these are the tasks that we will, be we will be performing in the first section of the video. Verify proper licensing, create cluster, inner cluster lifts, uh, set up peering between the storage cluster. Then we are going to uh, view the protection policy. We are going to create a, a protection policy and protection schedule. We will create a mirror type of snap mirror relationship and we will initiate an on-demand update. Okay, so I'm already here in the RTP session. Okay, so let's click to the RTP session on connect. Here we are. Okay, let's go to the let's go to the web browser Mozilla. We are going to log in here with admin credentials. And now let's go to configuration, then cluster, then licenses. Okay. A snap mirror license is okay. Here we can see the check, the green check here. So everything is fine on the licensing in this cluster. Now let's validate the license on our target cluster, which is a cluster two. Okay, uh, the credentials are pre-filling here. Click on sign in. Same steps, configuration, cluster, license. Let's scroll down a little bit. Yep, here it is, Snap Mirror License. Okay, next step, uh, we have to create the inner cluster lifts. For this, we have to go to the cluster one. And let's go to the network. I'm shrinking configuration, expanding network, and clicking on network interfaces. Here we can see the network interfaces, the network lifts. Here we have uh, data lifts and management lifts. Let's create a new one for inner cluster. Let's click on create. Uh, the name of this leaf is going to be cluster one underscore inner underscore leaf one. Interface role is uh, inner cluster. IP space is going to be default. And for assigning IP address, we are going to select now without a subnet. So we have to choose, and uh, we have to put in here uh, manually the IP address that we are going to use. 
in this case it is going to be 192.168.0.201 netmask 255.2.5.2.5.0 and get with 192.168.0.201 Let's click on OK. Now for the port, we are going to choose from cluster one, uh, node one. Um, let's expand it. It is going to be port E0G. Yep, here it is. Click on create. Okay, next step we have to create a leaf but in the cluster number two. Okay, same steps. I'm shrinking configuration tab in cluster two, expanding network, then network interfaces. Let's click on create. The name of this cluster will be cluster2 inner underscore leaf1. For role in a cluster connectivity, IP space default. For the IP address, we have to uh, click on without a subnet and for entering the manual, uh, manually the IP address. That's going to be 192.168.0.202 uh, same netmask that's zero and the full gateway 192.168.0.1 okay looks good then click on ok let's select a port is it going to be the same one, E0G in node 1, cluster 2, E0G. Click on create. Okay, this message uh, displayed here it is, is because uh, this cluster 2 is already paired with cluster T for another activities. Uh, we are not to be covering in this video, but it, it doesn't matter. It won't affect our configuration. Okay, now we have to configure cluster pairing. Let's go to cluster one, and now let's go to configuration, then cluster pairs. Uh, we have to scroll down. Yep, here it is cluster pairs. Uh, here we can see an empty box which means that uh, there is no no peers yet for this cluster. We have to create a new peer. Click on create and let's click on submit and continue for the IP space and, and the uh, an inner cluster leaf that we just created for, uh, for node 1. Not quite in cluster one. Click on submit. And now here we have to put uh, the target inner cluster leaf, uh, the one that we just create for cluster two, which is 192.168.0.202. Now let's get a passphrase to connect to this, uh, to this cluster two. Click here, and here we have to put uh, the cluster management IP address. Or we can put uh, the, uh, the DNS name. I am going to put here cluster2. Let's click on the generated link here, which opens a new tab. We have to sign in with uh, admin credentials. admin netapp1 
Okay, uh, the passphrase time validity will be one hour. It's okay for this exercise. For SBM permissions, click on all SBMs. And now let's click on generate the passphrase. Okay, here's the passphrase. Uh, let's click on copy passphrase and click on done. Now let's go back to cluster one. And here we are going to paste the passphrase. Control B. Here it is. Uh, let's click on, I'm moving this a little bit, initiate cluster peering. I'm not saving any password here. Cluster peering is successful. Click on continue. Okay. Okay, so now in this uh, new page, uh, we, here we have the uh, the SBM peering. Let's click on initiate SBM peering. Uh, here is the target SBM, SBM 1-cluster2. Uh, the SBM peering is initiating. Now here we have a message, peering pending. You must accept the peering request from the target SBM. So let's log in into the uh, cluster two. Here in the second tab, let's go to configuration, uh, 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 next option, SBM peers. Here we can see the request from cluster one, a status is pending. I am going to select it. Click on more actions, accept. I think it didn't take it. Click again, accept. Okay, you have select uh, you have selected to accept the SPM period request. So you want to continue. Let's check this uh, this checkbox. Then okay. Okay, so now here we can see that status is now peer. Okay, next is exercise protection policies. Uh, let's go back to the cluster one session. Now let's go to protection. I'm shrinking this. Oh, before we go to the protection policies, uh, as we just accept uh, the peering, let's click on validate peering, SBM peering successful. Click on continue. And here you can see that cluster peering and SBM peering completed successfully. Click on done. Yep, looks good now. We are going to proceed with uh, protection policies now. Uh, let's open uh, protection tab, then protection policy. Here we can see uh, the different protection uh, policies that uh, NetApp already includes in their systems for cloud backup default, DP default. So here we can see uh, asynchronous, uh, the types of, of the policies. Asynchronous bold, asynchronous mirror, asynchronous mirror bold, strict sync, and sync. So this is for creating, for having different uh, protection policies as for backup, like bold, this is the bold option, and for disaster recovery, that could be any asynchronous mirror or synchronous option. Okay, so we have to create a new policy. Let's click on create. Uh, the type of this uh, policy will be asynchronous mirror. The name will be my mirror. Transfer priority, let's keep on normal. And we have to keep transfer all sources snapshot copies. 
add comments. Uh, finally, we will, we will add a comment here for identifying or just newly created policy. Uh, LOD, lab on demand, uh, my work policy. Click create. Here we can see all my mirror. Uh, total retention count is two. Uh, we have two rules and talking about the policy rules is for a snap mirror created and the retention of those uh, snapshots. And all source snapshots, we are also having this enabled. Okay. Once we have a protection policy uh, created, also we need uh, an schedule that will be running our, our selected policy. So let's go to uh, here in uh, protection schedules. And here we have to uh, to take a look on the types of the schedules, we have time base and interval base. Time base, you uh, you configure here uh, the time on the call dart, or the time you want to run uh, your schedule, or interval interval base, how many minutes, how many hours of frequency of each other will be running uh, this schedule. Let's click on create new one. Uh, the name of the schedule will be 15 min. Uh, I think you're guessing correct now that with this will be an interval schedule that will run every 15 minutes. Yep. Click on create. Okay, next exercise is creating a protection relationship. Uh, let's take a look into the lab guide. Just a reminder, we are going to be creating a snap mirror relationship with, uh, from cluster one, uh, volume, Chicago retail, and the destination will be uh, the cluster two. Uh, we already have this configuration. Now we have to create a volume relationship. Okay. So let's get straight to it. Uh, let's go to storage in cluster one. No, network, no, storage, then volumes. Here we can see Chicago retail volume. If we click on the plus sign, here we can see that uh, this is a volume of 15 gigabytes. And here we can see that it's currently using uh, 3.88 megabytes. And for the snapshot total, you said is five megabytes. Here you can see protection is unprotected. And if we open our Windows Explorer in here, here we are going to see um, this Chicago retail volume as a shared drive. It is already mounted here and it has some simple uh, dummy information. So uh, once we have selected the volume, click on more actions, then protect. Uh, here we have our, or as, uh, we have an assistant here. Let's click on help me choose. Uh, for this particular one, we are going to click on minutes hours. And we don't need this for a backup solution. We just need it for disaster recovery, for having an, uh, a fast a recovery point objective. Let's click on apply. And here we have um, uh, information of our target. Uh, this is our target cluster, cluster two, the SBM uh, target, SBM dash cluster two. And the volume, uh, the volume target will be named as uh, with a suffix underscore test. So at the end of the day, uh, the, to the full name of this particular one will be Chicago Retail Test. Let's click on, on the configurations in here. 
Here we have more information and advanced options. Click on the protection policy that we will use. Here we have to select our newly created uh, policy, my mirror. And the protection schedule will be 15 minutes, the one that we just create. Uh, this step is very important. Initialize protection. We have to select yes in order to start uh, the relationship. Uh, in case you want to start later, you can click on no, but uh, this is a very important point. Let's click on apply. Okay, everything looks good. Now let's click on save. Uh, the protecting volume is in progress. And we have here a running background. And here we have a, a difference. Let me move this. Here you can see that protection relationship and now is established as yes. Let's expand this again. And here we can see that this volume is protected on cluster 2. So let's take a look into the cluster 2. Uh, let's go to volumes, let's shrink configuration, expand storage, then volumes. And here we are going to see our new volume, Chicago Retail Desk. This is really good. Let's click on the volume itself. And here we are going to see all the snapshot copies from, from the origin volume. Here we can see that uh, on our policy, we, we are grabbing all the, all the snapshots. And here we can see that uh, the last snapshot is from uh, almost uh, two minutes back, uh, which means that uh, when you create a relationship, it will create in the same time a new snapshot. So if uh, next exercise will be uh, creating, um, now uh, we will be performing a manual update, not running uh, on the on the schedule. We will be working. Uh, requesting it manually. So let's go to protection here in cluster two. Uh, not, not in here, let's shrink storage. Then protection, then volume relationships. Here we can see our new created relationship. Let's select it, then click on operations, update. Here we have an update uh, window. Let's just click on update. Now here we can see that the transfer status is transferring. Let's click on refresh. Now it's it all. Uh, here we can see that our relationship is, is uh, relationship state is snap mirrored. So as we just uh, run uh, an update, uh, let's go back to the volume. Here is our volume, Chicago Retail Destination. Click on the snapshot copies and scroll to the bottom. And here we can see the last snapshot. Okay, we are done with configuring snap mirror. Next exercise, failover, failback. For fail over fail back, I'm bringing uh, the lab guide again. Here uh, we have this scenario. We will be running a disaster recovery exercise. Where uh, here is our current scenario. Where we have our prod in data center one, and data center two is our disaster recovery site. After a failure, we will be simulating a failure or a disaster, or data center one will be uh, will become unoperatively for our storage. So now our read and write site will be our data center two. So now let's go back to to the shared drive. Here we can see all the data and everything is looking fine here. And 
in our cluster 2 we have our volume here in all volumes and now in order to prepare for a disaster recovery uh, exercise we have to mount this volume so let's go to the junction path by default uh, the target uh, volume is not mounted in the in the namespace so let's click on mount uh, the volume name is Chicago Retail Desk. Click on Mount. Okay, volume has been mounted in the namespace. Now let's make it available through a shared drive. Click on Shares. And now we have to click on Create Share. Folder to share. Now let's check uh, the namespace configuration Chicago Retail Desk. Click on OK and click create okay here we have our shared drive created uh, let's open a new windows explorer this is our shared, our shared drive uh, in cluster one i'm opening a new window here sorry about that okay looks better now so in the left side we have a cluster one here is the access for the shared drive that we just mount in cluster two here you can see it in the in the UNC UNC unified uh, unique naming convention SBM1 cluster two now here we have Chicago retail desk hit on enter and here we have uh, the same MyRoRed information but if we click in here to create any new file or folder uh, we have an access denied because on the target is configured as read only uh, no matter how many times we click on try again uh, we won't have access to create any writing here so once we are prepared for the disaster recovery exercise let's break the relationship between this snap mirror so let's go to the cluster 2 here we are then click on protection i'm shrinking the stretch expanding protection volume relationships select our current uh, relationship that we have click on operations quiz uh, click on yes i want to quiz the relationship and here we can see the transfer status is quest let's click on refresh yep looks good uh, by the way uh, this is healthy green check mark I used to take some minutes to be updated to the red uh, color but as long as we see the um, the information in the in the box everything is working fine now next step we have to break the relationship so now let's uh, click on operations again click on break are you sure you want to break uh, the relationship from source cluster one destination cluster two okay to break the selected uh, relationship click on break okay here we can see the relationship state is broken off let's refresh yep as expected so as as soon as it is broken or destination shared drive now is able to perform writes here we can click on new create new text document hello.txt there you go it's created there here we, here we can put a message and save it there hello this is a message from Sol.
And once the uh, click on save, everything is working fine. So as long as the relationship is broken, uh, the disaster recovery exercise can be tested and performed all the exercises and all the tests by databases team or whoever in the destination site. So assuming that our disaster recovery exercise is done, now we have to uh, establish back our relationship uh, from our from our target volume to our uh, origin volume. So this is very easy. Uh, we have to create that relationship, and this will, uh, if if desired, we we can include uh, the file generated uh, during the DR exercise in the target site. We can sync those in the origin site. So uh, this is the uh, the uh, disaster recovery site. Uh, this is uh, the primary side with no hello.txt file. And let's resync the relationship. Okay, so uh, let's click on refresh, click on operations, and here we have two options. Here, here we have the resync that will be resyncing from cluster 1 to cluster 2, but uh, on the mentioned scenario, we are going to uh, sync him back from cluster 2 to cluster 1 to see that hello.txt file. So let's click on reverse sync. Are you sure you want to proceed with reverse sync? Click on OK. Then reverse sync. Uh, reverse sync is in progress. Okay, uh, the process took around uh, six or seven minutes to be completed. Uh, here we have the bad, way, bad gateway uh, alert uh, for lab guide. It says that uh, this merely indicates that system manager did not get a response back within set of period of time. This process is still continuous, so this message can be ignored. Click on close and now let's uh, refresh this site. And here we have that the, uh, the volume relationship is gone from cluster two, as you know. Um, the relationship are managed in the target cluster and now this is not the target. Cluster two is no longer the target. And let's see the contents of the chart drive. This is our destination with hello.txt. And if we open our data center one and refresh it, here we have now the hello.txt files. So uh, the changes that we made during this disaster recovery exercise are now reflected on the origin site. So the final step is to uh, revert the configuration so that our Cluster 1 is sending data back to Cluster 2. Uh, for configuring this, uh, here in Cluster 2, we are already, already here in here in Volume Relationships. Click on Refresh. And here we have our information. So let's select it, click on Operations. And it's going to be the same steps as before. Let's click on Quiz. Yes, we went to quiz the relationship. Transfer status has changed from idle to quiz. Click on operations again and break. Okay, to break the select the relationship, click on break. Now the transfer status is idle, but our relationship state is broken off. So the final step is click on operations, reverse resync. And here we can see a summary. Uh, this is the current uh, configuration. Uh, cluster two is sending data to cluster one for resyncing the data. But now after the reversing, cluster one will be sending data to cluster two. 
expected behavior, expected operations. Click OK to reverse resync relationship. Click on reverse resync. And we are done. Here are the volume relationship configuration is gone from cluster one. And if we go to cluster two and refresh the page, here we have all original, original configuration. Here we have uh, the status is healthy. Our relationship status is snap mirror and transfer status is idle right now. Okay, that's it. Thank you for your time.